boy, not a nickel, not a penny in my name. I'm the king of Tap City, and I'm out of the game. A nickel up, a nickel down, another nickel gone. Ain't got a nickel left to carry me on if I ever get back on my feet. I'm moving Saturday alley up to Sunday Street, yeah. You cannot separate the story of Dave Van Ronk from the story of the 60s folk revival. They are, in essential ways, the same story. He was more than one of its first stars. He was Greenwich Village's supreme tastemaker, whose guitar mastery profoundly shaped the modern folk sound and whose leathery voice challenged everyone to keep it real. In Greenwich Village, Bob Dylan wrote in Chronicles, Van Ronk was king of the street. Beyond his musical influence, Dave was a fierce guardian of the music's values, its populist heart. Those who come seeking fame and fortune, he growled, should be driven from its lists with whips and scorpions. From Dylan and Tom Paxton to Suzanne Vega and the Roaches, generations of folk stars proudly called him mentor. In the 60s, Van Ronk was dubbed the mayor of McDougal Street, and there is now a Dave Van Ronk Street in the village. While best known as a blues man, Dave sang everything. Blues, rags, ballads, jazz standards, work songs, even sea shanties. Yeah, sea shanties. All on the bowl and homeward we are going. All on the bowl and the bowl and all on the bowl and before she starts a rolling. All on the bowl and the bowl and Dave Van Ronk was born in Brooklyn in 1936, attending a Catholic school he wistfully called Our Lady of Perpetual Bingo. His first musical love was traditional jazz, which he played in local combos. Jazz guitarist Jack Norton taught him to think like an arranger. Never use two notes when one will do. Never use one note when silence will do. The essence of music is punctuated silence. When I go by Baltimore. In the mid-50s, Dave haunted the Hootenannies in Washington Square, falling in love with folk music. There was no existing career path for a folk singer. He earned money at odd jobs and a few stints as a merchant sailor. He also became involved in radical politics. In 1958, Dave and a few others formed the Folk Singers Guild with the noble goal of protecting them from capitalist exploitation. Sadly, no capitalists wanted to exploit them, so they produced their own concerts. But the capitalists were coming. The revival hit like a hurricane. All of a sudden, Dave recalled in his memoir, Mayor of McDougal Street, they were handing out major label contracts like they were coming in Cracker Jack boxes. Van Ronk already was everything the wannabes wanted to be. A regular at the Gaslight, where he hosted the star-making hoots, and he'd lived the hard life they could only sing about. A merchant marine and card-carrying red who spun yarns about the jazz legends he knew and recorded for folkways, like Woody Guthrie and Leadbelly had. Up-and-comers didn't just want to sound like him, they wanted to be him. So much of how he shaped the modern folk sound came from his desire to adapt jazz arrangement. His elegant sense of space, subtle counter melodies that underscored emotion. When he heard the pianistic style of Reverend Gary Davis, he tried to master it by transposing piano rags like St. Louis Tickle, single handedly launching the ragtime guitar fad. He never became a major star, partly because he was so. Well, so Dave Van Ronk, and refused to do anything about that. He remained a fixture on the folk circuit, happily settling into a role as tribal elder. By the 90s, he was what songwriter Christine Lavin called the de facto godfather of the urban songwriter movement, teaching guitar to many of its stars along with the values of the old music. He had a genius for hard-earned maxims. When he played a Mississippi John Hurt song for Hurt, he was told he got the bass part backwards. As he shriveled in humiliation, Hurt said, no, you should keep it. It works. Candy man, salted dog. Candy man. The maxim? That's the folk process for you, Dave said. Some people call it creativity, but them as knows 
calls it mistakes. You won't be my candy man, I won't be your salty dog. He said it is impossible to overdress for the stage, by which he meant that any folk stage is every folk stage, every performer following the footsteps of the masters who created their profession. Dave never outgrew his childlike wonder at the vastness of tradition, always seeking out the roots of the form, eagerly showing everybody his latest discovery. It was down at Old Joe's Barroom, on a corner of the square. They were serving drinks as usual, and the usual crowd was there. He lamented the wannabes who didn't want that wonder, saying it isn't like homework, this is the reward. Producer T-Bone Burnett compared Dave's role to that of Sam Phillips at Sun Records. Van Ronk was leading a community, Burnett told the New York Times. He was gatekeeper of that community, and a damn good one. Dave is gone now, but not the mayor of McDougal Street, the godfather, the gatekeeper. Like tradition itself, he's still true north, reminding us with every note and space, every maxim and mumble, that it is not possible to love this music too much. When first I met you years ago in another time and place, a thought came to my mind I'd never seen a kinder face. Or warm a laugh, or gentle smile, or eyes so full of light. I'd be a fool if I didn't fall in love with you.